So this beer from Tiny Rebel looks cool as, but tastes like pineapples. <laughs> Don't know what I was expecting from Pineapple Express IPA, but I wasn't expecting that. But anyway, we'll let it off because it looks gangster. Yep. Oh, Blaine Gray here from Plastering with Beginners and today we're going to do another Q&A. Last week's session went very well. People said it went well. We heard about lots of plaster in people's eyes. Lots of it actually. Christ, I don't know how many people have went to hospital through that stuff. And so I thought I'd just keep going. People said they wanted to hear some more so let's uh, let's keep going with it. I've got my beer. Like I said, it's a Pineapple Express one. It is funky but I'm going to get through it. And I've got one called King Goblin which I'm going to get through as well. So hopefully we'll see a few. So let's crack on. Let's get a few questions answered. Let's get straight to the nitty gritty. Let's do this. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is tackle a few questions on sponge floor plastering, because I know this is a massive subject. A lot of plasters clash. You know, some hate it, some love it. And we're just gonna dissect some of the questions that are coming in and find out, you know, is it a load of rubbish or is it actually worth doing? So actually, We'll find out. You know, everyone's got their own preference on this, and this is probably a good place to start in today's Q and A, just because everyone's so torn up, aren't they? It creates wars between plasterers. But let's 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 go into a few questions then. So here's one. This is good vid. Have you tried any bigger areas though with the sponge? How far do you think you could do without turning back and troweling up, especially in this muggy weather? So I'm guessing it was summer. Uh, the finer flow, a bit more forgiving now. Okay, so one of the big things is the worry that when you sponge float a wall, you, the big worry is that it's going to set and it's going to leave them trail marks or the texture in the plaster. And this is a very understandable worry, do you know what I mean? You don't want all them setting in your wall unless you're trying to do a nice texture for an Artex ceiling or something. But, <laughs> but generally, you've got about, I do it about 5 to 10 minutes. 10 minutes is a push. So... Usually, even on a big wall, you can get to the other end and up and down. And by the time you come back to the beginning, start troweling out what you've done behind and usually get away with it. I've never been caught out on that front. I'm sure people have, but for me, I've never actually been caught out yet. But that's a legitimately good question. Do you know what I mean? How far can you go before you have to start worrying about turning back? I think you're okay, as long as you're not being daft. And even if you are in a, in a huge, huge wall and do it in sections, do one section, top and bottom, take it out, next section, next section, and just work it that way. And work it in, in chunks of walls rather than think you have to do it in one spot. So that, that's a you know a pretty good question there. And um, here's one. Is there a difference between fine and medium coarse sponge floats with this method? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, there is. Uh, the fine sponge flow is, like it said in the comment above, actually, a lot more forgiving. And this is what I recommend if you're starting out with sponge flow plastering. Because if it does go wrong, then you've got less to worry about. The medium course is a lot more abrasive. When you're using it, it will leave a bigger texture. But in my opinion, it flattens the wall to a, a better degree than if you were using a fine sponge flow. The medium does a lot more work than the fine sponge flow. It's, it's in the name really, isn't it? But that's what I think with that. It does a lot more work for you. So when you're doing it, I'd say start with the fine and then go to the medium. But I want to find some, I want to find someone who disagrees. I want to start a bit of a war and see, <laughs> see what's going on. I wouldn't mind finding a comment where someone's saying, sponge flow, plastering's wank. Or <laughs> so I'm going to have a quick look now to see if we can find Right, here's a good one. Right, we've got this comment from uh, someone. <laughs> what do you think about using cream of tartar? Right, so, do you know we've got the extra time sachets where when you use it, mix it in your plaster, it gives you like an extra half hour. When I did it, it gave me about 14 hours. <laughs> it was mad, it went on forever. Well, apparently, if you use cream of tartar, which is like, you get 14 packs for about three quid or something. I don't know the price, but it's cheap. If you use these individual sachets, use them as you would extra time. So you use one, pa uh, one pack per bag of plaster. Apparently it does the exact same job for like a tenth of the price. So that's what they're saying when they're saying, what do you think about using it? And I didn't know anything about it. It was someone in our plastering Facebook group who put me onto it. And he said, it's the bee's knees. So 
I've still not tried it yet. I want to get a video on it. But apparently it is good stuff. So, you know, if you're needing, if you've got a huge area you've got to work on and you're thinking, how the hell do I get it done? And you don't want to spend a lot of money on the extra time. Even though it's a great product, by the way, the extra time is solid. Maybe you'd be willing to have a go with cream of tartar, however you pronounce it, tartar. Well, tartar. I don't know. Anyway, you know what I'm saying. Let's let's try and find some H spiel on this sponge floating anyway. By the way, this stuff is strong, you know. It's knocking my blocker off. <laughs> it wasn't too good at the beginning, but it's getting a bit nicer as time goes on. I mean, especially now it's nearly done. Uh, anyway, I found one. Right, and this is a very, very good point, um, which kind of is a big argument why sponge floating shouldn't really be done. It's from Troller Trolls. Believe it or not, sponge floating is not recommended by the plaster companies and they won't stand over it as paint might not key. Apparently, I mean, I think the only company where you are supposed to sponge float is the NARF MP finish. That's the only company you can use for sponge floating. British Gypsum won't allow it. They won't guarantee it. Um, even though I've never known anyone call up a company, British Gypsum, when the walls fell off of plaster. But anyway... This is a big reason why apparently you shouldn't do sponge float plastering because it's not right to do it with the plasters we use. Apparently it's, it's not right, it makes the, the top coat weaker and apparently it, it isn't as strong as if you were going to do a traditional method. And everyone's saying, yeah, but you're wetting it up. But you wet the plaster up when you're doing a wet trowel. You're doing the same thing with a sponge float, in my opinion, and what you do when you use a wet trowel when you're plastering. So that's where I come unstuck. What is the difference between when you're using a sponge to wet the wall than when you get your big water brush and you're adding the same amount of water anyway? Where, what is the difference? Do you know what I mean? Everyone's like, oh, you, you're livening it up too much. And what I don't get is why can you do it with water in one way and not the other? So if someone could uh, come back to me on that, you know, just try and clarify a few things because that is the biggest with sponge float, biggest argument with sponge float, you know, Oh, it's, you shouldn't use it, you shouldn't do it. But you do the same thing with your water brush and your seconds less travel. So, I mean, if British Gypsum's watching, which I'm sure they won't be, but if they are, then please could you provide us with some answers because we're gagging to know. <laughs> uh, so let's, and I think there's another one here underneath, actually. Right there. Again, a very legitimate point, which has been pointed out with, this is from Terry Davis. Hi, Blaine. I've never tried sponge but I just can't get my head around why it's better. If you're flattened on board, why sponge it? If sand cement render, I can understand keeping a float uh, flat to take off the high spots. It just seems it's just more work to do and it's something else to wash. Uh, not doing your mate. To be fair, very good point. And this is the only time and one of the reasons why I don't always, I do sponge floating for a bit and then I get fed up with a clean up. This is my only qualm with it. Do you know I mean, it is great system. I love the finish. And I think it does make your wall flatter. Dis despite what he said, I don't think you can make your wall completely flat with just a trowel. There's human error. Do you know what I mean? The speed skims help. They really do, the spatulas. Um, but I do think the sponge makes a massive difference. But it's the clean up. Do you know what I mean? Water is everywhere. When you're using the sprayer, it's all over the floor. So it's, it just seems a bit messier. I just can't be bothered cleaning a sponge all the time. <laughs> it's a right nightmare. But yeah, that is my only qualm with sponge floating. And some that's why I usually start, I do it for about two, three months. And then I just get bored. I just get bored of the clean up. The sponge starts getting, you know, I do clean it every time I use it, but then the sponge starts disintegrating. And in the end, I just can't be bothered with it. <laughs> so that is my biggest qualm with sponge floating. I don't care about what his chips and say, um, I don't care about that. I don't care that people say, you know, you're wetting it down. My only thing is, I just can't be bothered with a hassle. So let us know what you think about sponge floating. Let us know in the comments below. Love to hear about the reasons why it's no good. Love to hear about the reasons why it is good. And, you know, let's get a little battle going. <laughs> I'm joking. But yeah, seriously, I know it's a mixed, a mixed bag and not everyone loves it, but I just had to get that one out of the way. So let's carry on with some other subjects. Something a bit lighter. So I've got a few more questions and we'll call it a night. I'm on the King Goblin now. This has been referred to me by a good friend of mine who loves his beer. And he's this is his go-to. And I must admit, this is a nice tasty brew. Strong as 6.6%, but 
That is nice. Seriously, if you get a chance, get one of them. It's lovely. Very Moorish. Mm. Anyway, let's get back to it. Um, so, we've got a few questions here. These are recent ones. And what we're going to do every week is try and keep on top of... If you keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them until we all fall out of questions and we've cracked the world of plastering. So, if you didn't use Accelerator, you wouldn't have needed Unibond. Right, so what I did here, basically, I skimmed an Artex ceiling. I've done a video on Artex before, scraped it, got a load of jip for scraping the Artex, rightly so, because it's probably asbestos contaminated. But, so I've, in this video, I've gone over it with bonding. But what I did, because it was such a small area, I used um, I used half time the stuff designed just for bonding, mixed it in, went off like a rocket, it took about four minutes. But what this guy's saying is if I didn't use that, then I wouldn't have needed to unibond it. I always like to PVA the bonding though anyway, because I find that if you go into it straight, it's that textured that I find when you put your multi over it, because of the texture, it traps the oxygen in and you get loads of the uh, the bubbles come through. I find you get that with bonding anyway, even if you do PVA it. But I think the PVA just cuts it down a bit. Because there's nothing worse when you get the trapped air bubbles in your skin. And then it'll just stay there till the very end. And the only way to get rid of it is cut it with a sharp trowel when it's dried. I hate that. It leaves it very shiny. It's not good for the painters. It's not good for anyone. So that's why I PVA'd the what the bonding. And I always PVA my bonding. Hard wall is different. I don't mind going on to that as it's still still drying. Because I think that's the best way to do it. But bonding, there's something about the texture. I don't know what they use. I don't know what they use to make that, but it just allows the air to get trapped between it a lot more than what it was if it's hard wall. So that's why I did that. So that's that one. And um, another good question, this is from Craig Corrigan. I did a review on what's the best plastering spl spatula. I can't remember when it was now, I did that a while ago. And I said the Rafina one was the winner. And he said, hi Blaine, great video again. I was just wondering, why do you use Ox Speed Skin more often than the Rafina spatula? If you think the Rafina is the better one of the two. Basically, this was a few months ago. I did I did like the Rafina at the time. I like the handle on the Rafina um, spatula. It's got a very, very good handle. It feels natural. And you're not in the way of the plaster when you're using it. Really like that. But I just didn't like that Rafina didn't make a blade that you could interchange. Ox is the one where you can replace the blade, say if you knackered it or whatever. And one of my Rafina spatulas got damaged. Um... So I actually went to the Ox one. I thought, I don't want to buy another one. Do you know what I mean? You spend enough money on your tools anyway. So I started using the Ox uh, ST blade, which is a plastic one. And I broke it in. And then I fell in love with it. So that is why, Craig, uh, I've stopped using the Rafina. It's because they want you to spend more money by not replacing the blades. That's in my opinion anyway. Yeah, defo. Mm -hmm. So... The Ox was the winner after that. Because I had it in a garage and I didn't want to buy another spat from Rafina. So that was that. <laughs> so, what else have we got? Have we got any more? Yep, yeah, people saying they enjoyed the Q&A. That's cool. And um, most important question of all, and we'll finish with this. This is what we'll finish on. United or City. Football is totally lost on me. Never watched it in my whole life. I started, pretended I liked it as a kid. Um, pretended I did I never have I used to lie about it and now I don't so Pete Spencer unfortunately none of them so on that note I'm going to finish this q and I'm going to drink this King Goblin drink it down nicely because it's bloody good um, thank you for watching leave any comments below let me know what you want me to cover in the next q and if it keep, if keep getting good feedback I'm going to keep doing it because I enjoy it I get to drink beer it's great crack so leave your questions below this video, any questions about anything, as long as it's plastering related, and we'll keep doing them. Thank you so much for watching. Blaine Gray, Plastering Beginners. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.